Hi, welcome to my garden here in Central Florida. I'm Maggie O'Halloran, one of the educators at the Florida School of Holistic Living, and today we're talking about tinctures. Tinctures are a short way to say concentrated herbal extract. You've all seen them. You can find them in almost any health food store. They have dropper bottles that have wonderful little tools that you can use to put it into your mouth or into your cup of water. They have squeeze tops and it's concentrated herbal extract. So it is the plant that you often use for teas or decoctions or in other ways that is in a concentrated way so it makes it portable. Tinctures are really helpful to be able to take your medicine with you or take your herbs with you um, instead of taking your tea apparatus and your hot water and going around with you. The term tincture is used for concentrated herbal extract and it really is just plant material and a liquid or solvent. The most common liquids used to make a tincture are glycerin. And glycerin is a byproduct of the vegetable oil industry and it tastes really sweet, but it doesn't actually impact the sugar levels in your body. It just tastes sweet. It doesn't impact you on a cellular level. Vegetable glycerin. If you're using vegetable glycerin and you buy it from a really good source, this isn't the same glycerin that you might go to um, a pharmacy or CVS or something and pick up to make bubbles. It is glycerin designed to be ingested. So make sure you have the right one if you choose to go with that solvent. The next most common liquid used to make tinctures uh, is apple cider vinegar. And you see here I have raw, unfiltered apple cider vinegar. This works really wonderful. A lot of us already have this in our kitchens. It's super easy to make a tincture with apple cider vinegar. You just want to make sure that you have a vinegar that's not really designed just for cleaning or something. I'm not going to use uh, white vinegar or something like that to make a tincture. This is vinegar that's designed for me to put into my body. If you live in a tropical climate like I do, you want to be aware of using vinegars that have the mother in them. That means it's a fermented product and it has a little bit of the um, SCOBY or the, the bacterial body inside there. And if you're using fresh plant material, you can create a science experiment. So just be mindful of that. apple cider vinegar with dried plant materials and I don't seem to have any trouble just be mindful um, when you're checking your tinctures that we'll talk about in a few minutes that you are watching for things that are growing that shouldn't be the third most common or actually probably the first most common liquid used to make a tincture is alcohol and I have vodka here but you can use any kind of alcohol that you want for most plants, getting 40% alcohol is enough. And to know what percentage of alcohol you have, you just look at um, proof. So if it's 80 proof, then it would be 40% alcohol. If it's 90 proof, then it's 45% alcohol. And if you live in a place where you can get 150 proof, then it's 75% alcohol. You're getting where I'm going with this. You want at least 40% alcohol. For the most part, most plants are fine at 40%. Uh, that's mostly because of the way that it leaves your tincture self shelf stable. When you're thinking about a tincture and how long it's safe to keep it on the counter or in your cabinet, your apothecary, alcohol by far will last the longest. At 40% at least alcohol, it could be 15 or 20 years before that tincture goes bad. Glycerin is the second in the shelf life. Glycerin lasts three to five years, whereas the vinegar tinctures will typically last around six months to a year. And that's when I just think about checking, smell it, look at it, see if it's growing anything funny see if it tastes the same as it did in the beginning, see if it um, looks the same, color variations, things like that. 
These are things that you look at in terms of how long it can last. Alcohol lasts the longest by far. There are a few tools that you need outside of your liquid to make a tincture. You need a jar. Any jar will work. This is an old honey jar. I have an old jelly jar. Any jar will work. Really the only thing you need to think about is how easy it is to clean the lid. So this lid is all one piece. It's really easy for me to throw into my dishwasher and sanitize it. You want to make sure you can get all the potential bacteria is cleaned out. So the sanitized section um, setting on the dishwasher works for me. You don't need to boil your jars like you would if you were canning, um, but you do want to make sure that they're clean. I know a lot of people that just wash with hot soapy water and are fine, and that's especially fine if you're using uh, a, a new jar that comes from a company like Ball or Mason that have the two-part lids that you can replace or use new each time you're making a tincture. You just want to make sure everything is clean and dry. These metal lids are prone to rust, so you want to be really mindful of the, the liquid on the outside of the jar. You need straining devices, and here are a couple almost any kitchen strainer device will work for you. It's fine. You're really just thinking about the size of the hole and making sure your plant materials can't get through whatever the strain device you're using. I like to use my tea strainer often. This came with a, a tea cup as a gift from a store. It was just a cup with the strainer in it and a lid. It was really wonderful to have because this strainer rests so easily right on so many different containers it makes it really easy for me to strain my tincture. There are other devices that you can use things like um, cheesecloth can be really helpful with cheesecloth you can get really fine if you want to come on in um, you can get finer you can uh, holes so my cheesecloth I can leave open like this or I can fold it if I want those holes to be even smaller to really filter out all of the excess plant material for my tincture. I also use clean sanitized uh, cotton, plain cotton muslin cloths from my kitchen and you can see I've used this one several times. It has little holes but it still has lots of space for me to be able to strain out my tincture with no problem at all. So, jar, any jar will do with a clean lid. Everything needs to be clean, that's all you need. Second, plant material. Now, there are books and resources that you can look into um, to think about how much plant material, but I use the simpler's method and you might think the simpler's method would be maybe one plant at a time or something like that. But the simpler's method is really about eyeballing things. So I just eyeball it, right? So if I'm using dried plant material, I would fill the jar halfway. So dried plant material is about halfway. And then I would fill it with whichever liquid or menstruum I want to use. With And this is lovely Tulsi, smells amazing. It came from this beautiful collection of Tulsi right behind me. With Tulsi, I will just muddle the leaves. So I'm just, I'm squashing the leaves, rubbing them in my hands, not just because it smells amazing, but I wanna be able to access the medicine that is inside the cell walls. Um, and it really helps if I muddle it or get it worked up a little bit. And with fresh plant material, I usually go more to about three quarters of the jar. Some people will put the plant material and their liquid in the blender and put it back in their jar, but I really like just leaving it whole in this way. It makes it really easy for me to filter it out. It's easy to do at home. The next thing I need to do is pick 
a menstruum and I'm going to use a combination actually. I'm going to use a combination of alcohol and glycerin. So with alcohol, if it's 80 proof alcohol, that means it is 40% alcohol and the other 60% is water. So each plant has constituents or aspects of that plant that is extracted by different things. So things like minerals extract really nicely in vinegar and there are other plant constituents that extract better in alcohol and others extracts better in water. So if you are considering specific plant constituents in your tincture, you'll want to make sure that you look into that and make sure you're using the liquid that best extracts that constituent. For most things, you're fine with alcohol because it has water and alcohol. So I just filled up my jar with my liquid and I'm shaking it. I'll make sure to label it. That's like the most important part really. Well, maybe clean jar and then label is the second most important because this beautiful jar, I could definitely remember the moment that I made this tincture almost on the full moon, um, lovingly in my backyard and I'll take it inside. I have a special spot in the dark. I'll keep it and I'll shake it and I'll sing to it every day for four to six weeks. A lot of people like to start tinctures um, on a moon and then wait until the following half cycle of a moon um, to harvest. So I'm starting this today and I'll shake it every day and talk to it and thank it um, for the next six weeks and then I'll harvest. Okay? Any questions? So it's okay to mix the vodka and the glycerin. Would you, if you were doing just glycerin, how would you, would you just do straight glycerin? How would you do that? That's a great question. Okay, so glycerin, when I get it in the store, it's at a concentration level that would make it not great at extracting anything from the plant because it's so thick and mucilage, muc not mucilages, so thick. It's like honey almost. So st the standard is glycerin and water combined. And you go at 40% glycerin, 50% glycerin is what I usually shoot for just to make sure I'm not getting too much um, water because you don't want too much water because you could start a science experiment. No science experiments other than delicious plant experiments. Um, so with the alcohol today instead of glycerin and water and that's okay you just if you're using glycerin you want to make sure that it's not all glycerin otherwise it won't really extract as much because it's so thick. Great question. And if you have a proof if you have um, a proof that's higher than 40 percent let's say you're using like a hundred percent or something. Yeah. Um, can you dilute it to make a lesser amount? Definitely. Great question. So if you have a 150 proof alcohol and you really only need 40%, you can't 40% alcohol to have it shelf stable and things like that. You can add water to make it to that 40% if you want to water it down. You know, a lot of herbalists like to do it that way because it's more cost effective. Yeah. Great questions. Of course. So, I have shaking this tincture and I have a yarrow flower tincture that I made several months ago over the summer. So it's been there for a while and I bring this to you to let you know if you miss that six week mark for most plants, it's completely fine. I can open it up and I can see there's no, nothing looks weird, nothing's growing on those plant materials inside, it's completely fine. I can harvest it and it'll still be wonderful mm, yarrow plant medicine.
I have this super handy device, which is a funnel that has its own filter in it. And this I found at a store, a local hardware store that carries canning materials. And I have, this is my system, works for me. I'll add that nice cloth so that I get as much plant material out as I possibly can. And you'll see that the cloth is helpful for other reasons as well. And I just dump it in. You can hear it. You can see the jar is filling. You, this towel or cloth comes in handy for another reason because I can squeeze my towel and really access all that liquid that is inside the plant now but it's getting squeezed out. I like to use just the twisted towel squeeze method. There are lots of tools and items that you can use for this process. One of them is a tincture press. They're big and um, you can get a lot of torque and be able to squeeze every drop of alcohol out of the plant material. I like to use a potato ricer for this. This is a, a tool that you can buy anywhere that sells um, kitchen devices. I can put my plant material, either I can dump it from my towel or cloth into my potato ricer or I can just leave it in which is what I prefer to do and then squeeze it a little bit and get a little bit more of that wonderful tincture out Nice. Now I have a tincture. It's ready. I can now use my super tiny funnel and add a tincture bottle. You can see I've reused this one. It was a official one that I've made sure was really clean and I used my masking tape and put something else inside. These can be reused, just use caution. You don't want to put anything in your mouth that, um, that has been sitting in, you know, empty for a while or something. I usually, if I'm going to reuse them, I, as soon as it's empty, I clean it out and then add the new tincture to go ahead with what I need to do. So, tinctures. Pretty simple to do. Concentrated herbal extract. I just taught you the simpler's method. If you want to go deeper into this, there I have a couple of books here I like to recommend. One is Rico Check, Making Plant Medicine. Um, this herbalist does a really nice job of breaking down ratios and uh, different plant constituents and the uh, liquid that does the best at extracting it. Another recommendation is by herbalist uh, Thomas Easley and Stephen Horn, the Modern Herbal Dispensatory. And both of these will give you a little bit deeper look into making your own tinctures. So thank you for joining me in my garden to talk about making tinctures. I look forward to seeing you here again.